Hey guys, how's it going? I'm getting this room started for me and Donnie. Um, let me just set this up real quick and then you should be in shortly. Wrapped up right here. Let's finish this room setup. We should be good to go. So our Euro NZD right here is about to hit TP finally. Uh, looks like everything's finally swinging back, but we might have to give it a little more time before um, before we can move forward with that. So let me just get this set up here. It looks like everything is good to go. Let me just get this link sent out to Donnie and then we can get started with this session. I'm just waiting for Donnie to show up real quick and then we can get started. Hey, Donnie, how's it going, bro? Can you hear me? Hey, Donnie, can you hear me? Hey, Sean, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, could you hear me? Yep, okay, I got Perfect. it. My yeah, back. Oh. All right. I just got it. All right, is that better? Yeah, it looks like we're good to go. All right, perfect. So I had a few things I wanted to go over before, you know, we started the trading week. <laughs> well, so I noticed um, last week, some of my trades at Journal some of the losses, I already, I, I, I took a look at them and there's only four because I was, you know, I was swinging all week, but the one common theme is I believe they were just too close to like support or too close to resistance. And I guess I was trading on support, on resistance. You get what I'm saying? Like I was entering at that point where it's like sitting on support, sitting on resistance, and then it literally just reversed the entire time and never ever go into profit, you know? Um, but overall, I had, I if I'm not mistaken, I had 13 trades and four out of the 13 were losses, but nine were good. That's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. But, uh, I, so I was like, I can't be too, too mad. And it's like, it was the, the ones that were losses, they were easy to identify because like I said, it's, it was flaming red the whole time, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just easy to spot. 
So I think one thing I wanted to go over, I guess like go back to basics. I want to take a step back and like make sure I'm charting my support and resistance zones um, properly. And then and from there, making sure I'm just applying the, the K2 daily strategy um, properly, you know? So, so that's, and then after that, like I want to just take a look at the, the scalping strategy you guys have been doing on the Dow you know, I want to take a peek at that and see if I'm doing that properly too. Cause I tried once. I was like, Ooh, I think I got it, but it was like this morning, but I'm just going to make sure it wasn't luck. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. So let's get started with, uh, I guess we can get started with the first, uh, your first question. So you're talking about, you took some entries. Uh, do you have a specific pair that you want to look at? So I can pull it up. Hey, Don, you still there? Uh, I can see your mic's moving, but I can't hear anything you're saying. Hold on a second. Let me see. You want to switch screens? Uh, we could if you want. You want to? I'll switch this over. So let me just uh, move you over. To, yeah, let me move you over to panelists real quick. Did you, uh, did you get disconnected? <laughs> Let me see if I could, uh, okay. Can you hear me? All right. I think you're good. Let me just, um, make you a co-host real quick. There you go. So if you want to share your screen, you can share it now. Have the option. Uh, it should now, so you should have the, uh, the share screen button on your, uh, Wait, Sean, I don't think I can hear you. Hey, Donnie, can you hear me? I think it has you muted. I can't hear you that well. See, it shows that I'm, I'm good. Um, let's... Oh, that's not me muted. Hey, Donnie, I hear I'm a typey. Hey, Donnie, could you hear me? Let me, um, yeah. Um, okay. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I mean, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Let's see. It doesn't have him on mute. See, uh, Donnie, can you hear okay. me? That's nice. Unmuted. It says his mic is on. That's so weird. Okay, I just want to share my screen. Oh, there we go. So I can share my screen here. Can you hear John? Because I can't. I, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can hear. You. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Um. I'm not sure what the issue is. Uh, let me see. So I could hear you. I could hear you, but I'm messaging you on the thing. Okay. Can you hear me now, Donnie? Yeah, let me see. You can hear me now, right? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. That's weird. Like it shows him talking, but. Oh, I think I know why. You might have the. Uh... There we go. That's why my sound. I had to switch my sound card. Okay, there we go. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay, cool, perfect. We're good to go. All right. So just go to share screen, and I'm just going to share it with you, right? Yeah, and then it should take over. Or you want me to mark up on your chart? Uh, it's up to you. It's really up to you. Whatever you want to look at. Um, I don't know if whatever you think would be easier. It's. Just uh, I guess I'll just do yours. So we don't have to like switch or anything like that. 
Okay, sure. So uh, which pair do you want to look at? I'll put it up. Let's look at like GA, for example. Right. Or GU. Let's look at G, GU. You? Okay, cool. Okay. So do you, um, do you have like the time of the entry? I could rewind it and then... Um... Let me see. I have this guy. Let's take a look back at it. Sorry, it was G, it was a Swiss franc, and I think it was at, oh, I don't have the entry for that one. Oh, let me find the one that I actually have the entry for. Is it for a GBPCHF? Oh, no, 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 it was, it was, that was the wrong pair. I had the wrong screen shut up. Gotcha. There's this one, it was on, how about this one? ECAD is on February 1st, and I believe this was at about noon. It's around there, yeah, like around noon. Let's see. All right, was it noon your time or noon my time? Uh, noon my time. Okay, so that'd probably be give on the swap. So I'll just, I'll just rewind to like around that area. So we're on this time. Uh, let me go ahead and draw it. So you're applying the uh, K2SR strategy, right? Correct. All right, I'm gonna draw the zones real quick and then we can see what you saw here. Oh, okay. I said to you uh, the chart will what it looked like on my screen. Oh perfect. All right, cool. So once I draw this up, I'll check your see if they line up properly. Okay. They should, because I don't think there was much of a much of a discrepancy here. Everything looks these like these zones look pretty perfect. So mm -hmm. this should be pretty solid. All right. So let me just turn that off. Turn on the momentum indicator. Let me check yours out right now. Okay. Oh, actually that was missing my my zones. Oh yeah. I just, see, uh, I just see one line on yours. I think that's the uh, moving average, I'm assuming. Yeah. And then the, the other, the SR2 is, is what's lined up there. No, it's our regular SR. This one, here we go. This one is your, uh, this was on January 22nd. I don't know what time ago. Um, I'm going to scratch that one because I don't have a time frame on that one. Uh, I think that one is, let's see if it was 22nd, you said, right? Yeah. Um, let me see if I could find that. Okay, so I think it might have been this right here. Actually, it was no, on, but it was on EA. It wasn't on ECAD. Oh, the this. Oh wait, are you talking about the screenshot that you sent me, or are you talking about something else? Oh, I'm talking about something different. I, I found okay. one as the zone there, but it's on oh the gosh, screen. okay, yeah. I was just looking at yours here because it was ECAD. So you said EA, right? Yeah, it was on. It was on the hourly time frame. Gotcha, okay. EA on the hourly. Um, right, so let me yeah, see. there we go. Uh, do you know what time was it? I'm trying to find it now. I wouldn't necessarily use the strategy on the I one. I know it was, start, it was forming like a little W. Gotcha, okay, let me see if I could possibly right here on February 4th. You said you would use it on the one hour? Yeah, because this strategy is meant for the four hour. So I'm not, um, I've never used this on the one hour. So that's probably why you ran into some issues. Um, oh. Yeah, because the zones aren't as strong on the one hour as they are on the four hour. Because this strategy is meant for intraday to swing trading. So if you're trading on the one hour, this is like too short of a time frame for you to use this. I mean, you can use it if it works, but I haven't tested it. So I can't see whether it works or not. But we can still look at it to confirm. Okay, I sent you the zones on, on Telegram. So you can see exactly what it looked like that at that time. You know what uh what time is that so I can rewind it to it? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Let me see if I can find it on my phone. Uh let's see. I think it might be right here actually. Um it I just can't really match it up because you don't have the uh the momentum indicator on there, but I think it looks like it's somewhere around here. It looks okay. like you took it as soon as it starts swinging uh upwards. So let me just check because um it looks yeah. like it looks like right here you entered it when it was um Sorry, screenshot's not opening up. Let me fix this real quick. 
Uh, it looks like you entered it when, um, yeah, let me just draw this out. Cause it looks like your entry was somewhere around right over here. So let me just draw these zones. Right okay. So we got this lined up right here. I think this is exactly what you saw there. Yeah, um, I found it. It was that it was um that period I'm talking about was January 22nd at 3:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that'd be 6:30 your time. 6:30 p.m. Right? Yeah. No, 6:30 a.m. Oh, a.m. Wait, on the 28th. I think this is the same place where you drew this, right? These zones right here. This is a. Uh, it's exactly where this is right here. This is actually afternoon. It's 4 p.m. my time. So oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Is uh, this is the right time, right? I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's the right. Okay, right. gotcha. Yeah, so it looks like you entered it, but there was no entry there. So you'd have to wait for price to break the structure, like breaking close past it right here. Mm -hmm. But it never broken close past it, so there's no entry there, like where you took your entry. It looks uh -huh. like you took it. Yeah, I'm not sure why you took it right there because you have it marked up right here. Um, let me see. Did you have a long position marked up? I had a uh, right see. here, I believe. Oh, the reason why I see now, um, I think it was, I, oh, that, that's why. I was looking and I was like, oh, it's starting to look like it's going to form a, a pennant flag. And then I think, I think I like, you know how sometimes you're going to alert like it's painting the signal, uh, not paint, sorry, painting the candle, but it doesn't, you have to wait till the candle closes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that's what ended up happening. I think I saw it like signal it and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can jump in here. And oh, you got it early. Yeah. yeah. That's what I believe happened there. Yeah, that seems like that's the problem here because it looks like you marked up this other cell entry right here that actually worked. Because if you followed it proper, you actually followed it properly right here where you had the rejection, uh, you had the cell signal that broke and closed past structure. And it looks like you marked that up right there for a cell. That worked out perfectly, full TP right there. The yeah. only problem with this right here is you didn't wait for it to actually close. You'd have to wait for it to close outside the structure like that uh, in order to take that trade. So it looks like you took the trade like somewhere over here before it, uh, it broke above it. And that's why uh, it ended up, you know, it ended up what it would have hit, but you would have had to wait until it closed to this one. Because technically this entry would have been valid if you waited for this candle right here. I see. Too, so too early. It's way yeah, too early. Did, yeah. I mean, you got lucky here, obviously, because you entered a little early. You entered like about four hours before you should have. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it could have ended, you know, complete opposite if you, uh, if it didn't close outside of here. But you can see that it actually works out. <laughs> if you actually wait for the uh, confirmation right here. So better be safe than sorry, just wait for the candle. Yeah, I mean, you know, trading is a game of patience. Most people lose that trading because they're impatient and they get in when they shouldn't. Um, I mean, you know, obviously you're not gonna get this lucky every single time. Cause like, for example here, if you're trying to wait for like, let me see, like something like right here, if you're waiting for this right here and say you entered a sell at this point, it would reverse on you super hard to hit, go straight to stop loss. So, so like if you're like if you wait for it like for example here um it goes both ways you know rejection we have the sell signal right here that closes below the structure if you took that there that would be you know full tp obviously right and then same situation like over over here if you wait for the rejection the buy signal right here which breaks structure if you took this right here as well i mean obviously it's full tp and then if you took the next one over here where it broke structure again as well you know, full TP right there. The only problem is if you were to take these trades, like for example, right here, if you were try try to take this sell right here and it didn't close below and you took a short position, it would have went straight to stop loss. See, so that's just what I mean by like this this right here. You kind of got lucky because it actually broke above it like a couple hours later because you try to enter right here and then it didn't break for one, two, three, four hours later. And if it didn't break and close past there, it could have easily just went the opposite direction if it didn't end up breaking above it. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah. 
and I and I guess that's like where, where I'm struggling. I'm like, I guess this is, I guess that's the main thing is it's not not jumping in when it's in the zone, but when it's like out the zone, you know, when the candle is closing outside of it and the next one opens outside of it, correct? Exactly, yeah, because that's the first requirement. That's the main thing that you're looking for. Like if that's not there, then there's no trade at all because there's no confirmation of a break and close past structure. Uh, that's that's what the strategy is based off. You know, it's based off confirmation of um, breaking structure, and then you use the momentum signal to confirm that price is going to continue in that direction. So, like the first requirement is to confirm a breaking close past structure. The second requirement is to identify the direction of momentum, and that's pretty much the strategy right there. Um, if you skip out on the first requirement, then there's technically no entry there until it does break and close, which it does happen. It happens here. Like you took it here, but you entered a little too early, like four hours before it you know, it actually played out. Um, but I mean, that's, that's the key with like trading, you know, that's the, uh, the key with, uh, taking quality entries versus taking lucky entries for the most part. And that was lucky. It's clearly when that bear candle opened up, it could have ended pretty badly. Like yeah, right exactly. There. Yeah. Like for right here, cause you already enter the trade and it was coming down actually, like it was rejecting off this point. So if this, if this next candle didn't, you know, cross above here and close, it could have easily just shot back down here. Cause you can see right here that it's establishing lower lows, right? So you have the high here, the low, the lower high. And then if it came down lower, it'd be a lower low down here. And there'd be no way that we go, it would go back up pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, you know, the Forex gods are looking after you. So it looks like they, uh, <laughs> they gave that little, they gave that little push up there. And then thankfully, okay. thankfully that played out. Cause then you, uh, you ended up hitting your full TP right there. Oh, thank goodness. So yeah. I, and I guess that's also a theory. Like I just need to, Go back to fundamentals because the other three that I had, I don't know why I deleted it on my phone. I guess because I was annoyed, but <laughs> it was basically the, the same thing. I felt like it was just um, just simple things, and I felt like it was just um, it was being impatient, you know, yeah. just trying to get in there as early as possible, you know. And yeah, that was pretty much it. So I just basically went to see like, and that, now that I know that because I didn't know trading this, I thought you know we do this on the thirty minute time frame, so I thought hourly we we even better. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it obviously works on the hourly. It's just you're going to get a lot of false entries because, you know, on the hourly, you're going to have a lot of back and forth movement versus on the four hour. Because, for example, here, this four hour candle would have closed on this one right here. So if I go on the four hour, over here, uh, you would have had the same entry right there on the four hour. Oh, I see. I see. So, so that looks legitimate. Yeah, the difference with the one hour is you just get a lot of noise. So right here, this technically these four candles qualify as the four hour candle. So yeah. you just would have gotten in when it closed, you know, fully versus, um, you know, getting in a little too early uh, prior. Because the strategy still works on all of them. It's just on the one hour, you'll catch a lot more noise versus on the uh, on the the four hours. So like for example, right here, you see that price uh, rejected off this structure. We had a buy signal that broke in close past structure, but it ended up going the opposite direction, right? Yeah. You, you get a lot of noise on here. If you go on the, um, so if we rewind this and then go on the four hour, see if we would have avoided that. So like right here, we would have avoided that because there was no buy signal. So we wouldn't even taken this buy right here. See the big difference there? Yeah, I see it clearly. Yeah. Cause like, that, that's what I mean. On the four hour, you get more quality entries. And then if you go on the one hour, um you'd get this entry here but odds of you hitting stop loss are more likely like for example right here as well this one right before it there's another entry right here technically but if you took this um i mean you probably could have moved your stop loss and profit to prevent getting stopped out but if you were going for that full position up to here you know to the next zone obviously you wouldn't have hit that but if you were using the uh the four hours so if i rewind to this candle here and you were on the uh, four hour, you would have just completely avoided that trade right there. So you would have avoided two losses right here because there was no buy signal. So you wouldn't be taking buys, you'd only be taking sells. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I'll get to the, the, the four hour then. Yeah, because um, yeah, because this strategy is based on on a on um, intraday trading. So obviously, if you want to intraday trade, you should probably trade on something higher than the one hour. Because intraday is kind of, it's kind of still a smaller time frame, where you can still take scalp entries on there, but it's not necessarily going to dictate, you know, where the price goes, like for the entire day. Because it seems like you want to hold these trades for like a little longer than a couple hours, right? Unless you're scalping. 
Oh, no, I just went in and out for the same day. Oh, well, yeah, if you're doing that, then you should probably go on the shorter time. Maybe. Because the, uh, the one hour is like in limbo. Like the one hour, like 30 minute would be considered scalping. One hour, you're kind of in the middle of scalping and intraday. So if you're using the one hour and you're trying to scalp, I mean, that's too, uh, that's too wide of a time frame, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. So I think one hour, uh, I personally wouldn't trade on the one hour because you kind of get, you kind of get tripped up because you'll have the, the scalping entries that will show up sometimes. And then you'll have like some intraday entries as well, but then it's going to be hard to differentiate them both because one is going the other way and then one's going the other way. You kind of get what I'm saying with like the time frames. Cause like the, the one hour is kind of two in the middle. The four hour will, will be like for intraday swing trading and 30 minute would be for just scalping. But, oh. but yeah, cause the one hour, if you're looking on the one hour chart, like for example, if I go on the one hour here and you're just analyzing it from here, you're still getting data from like, you know, for like five days. So you're technically like intraday to swing trade. If you're on the 30 minute, your data on the chart is like, way less, it's only like one day. So if you're trying to get in and out of the trade within a day, you only want one day's data on your chart, right? Cause you want to see what's going on from the day before yeah. up until the following day. Right. So it's like a, it's like a big difference depending on what time frame you're trading on. I think I just realized all my zones are probably messed up cause I'm charting on a one hour <laughs> and I, yeah, it's starting to hit me. Let's go to like a clean chart. Let's go to like a GJ for example, say. All right, let's go. Let's go over to GJ. Yeah, because if you're charting on like a bunch of different time frames, um, you're definitely gonna get confused and you're gonna get a lot of different um like zones that are like kind of relevant. Because if you're drawing zones on the four hour and you're only trading like on if you want to get in and out within a few hours, the four hour chart's not gonna matter because the four hour chart zones are gonna go out like days, if not weeks out, like far out, right? And then same with the one hour. If you're looking at zones on the one hour, you're looking at zones that go far out like five to ten days. So if you're trying to get in and out of a trade within a few hours, then you, you're better off trading on a shorter time frame where it has like the specific data for that time, that, that exact time available to you versus looking so far out where you it becomes irrelevant because you're not really looking to trade for, you know, days or weeks on end. Okay, that makes sense. Because like I was trying to figure out how to chart on like, let's say like GJ. So. I feel like on, on GJ, the, the, I mean, it would, the chart would look a lot cleaner because the you know candles wouldn't be as like noisy. You wouldn't get any like all, all those dojis or tweezers, for example, say going to be all over the place. So yeah, yeah. like, and this is just my way of thinking when I'm on here. Do you mind if I have like if I get? Cool? What was that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I think your mic is going in and out. Uh, could you repeat what you just said? Sorry. Oh, do you mind if I get? Uh, I, I, I control. I can show you. Do you mind if I get control just so I can just show you like how I go about like, I guess, charting on this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you still have control. You can just uh, switch the charts if you like. Um, just share your screen on there and then it should be uh, good to go. Okay. Put uh, all panelists? Uh, no, like there should be a button there where it just says new share and then you should be able to share your screen. Okay. It should be, uh, it should be in that little bar that uh, you get it. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so you have access to it if you want to share it. Try sharing it again. Let me see if it works. It says that I have control, but it's not really like... Yeah, it says waiting for, for Donnie Hugh to control your screen. Let me see. Did you, did you click the right button? Let me see. I, I think you might have clicked the wrong one. Let's see. Yeah, let me see. Give up, all right, give up remote control, share screen. Okay, I see what it is. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. There we go, yeah, we're good. Okay, perfect. So let's turn this off really quick. Shoot this guy a little bit. All right, perfect. So let's, let me show you like, so this is what it looks like whenever I'm, I guess, taking a peek at it. Let's look a little higher since now that we got that out the way. So when I see this now, and mind you, I'm, I'm driving home majority of the time. But when I am home and I'm doing my um, my zones, I would typically go go about like this. I would, you know, just grab my zone right here.
So yeah, I'll pretty much leave it at that. Gosh, okay, yeah, it looks pretty clean. Cool, am I missing any or anything like that? Well, it's tough one right here, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, I mean, there's more zones there. So just depending on which strategy you're playing, um, I mean, all the zones are pretty important. So I don't know if you want to draw all of them or if, because if you're playing like a certain strategy, if you're using the K2SR, all the zones are going to be relevant. Um, but if you're playing something else, then you know, obviously you can draw it like that too, because it makes it a lot cleaner. But just depending on what you're applying, um, I mean, if you could pull up like an actual entry and then we could draw it from there, because uh, depending on, on what entry you're trying to take, you might have missed like a couple of zones. So if you see one there that you are looking at, we can uh, analyze it from that point. Uh, let's take a look at, okay, this is a little, a little cleaner than that. And just to confirm, we're still looking at the K2SR strategy, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm. And that's why I was trying to make sure I'm uh, drawing my zones out correctly for it. So there's this. Yeah. So if you're doing the K2SR strategy, you have to draw out every zone. Like you can't be picky and choosy with what zones you want to draw to keep it clean because um, it, it's important that you understand, you know, where all the rejection points are, not just the ones that you find uh, relevant because they're all relevant technically if you're applying that specific strategy. Okay. So, and then how, and how I'm doing, going about it is correct. Like basically just like, you know, filling in the gaps and just, Maybe yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for the most part, you're doing it. You're doing it proper. It's just uh, I mean, you technically don't need to draw every zone. Every zone comes. It, it becomes an important zone if like you're taking a trade around there. So, like for example, if you're taking, oh, okay. yeah, if you're taking, if you're looking at an entry that's like way above all the other zones, then the zones below it are irrelevant. So you're not really looking there. Um, but if like the zones are right next to your entry point, then yeah, it's going to be relevant for you to uh to actually draw all the zones within that area did not know that oh, okay well i guess that makes sense yeah because if i'm not worried about it why would i draw it out i guess that makes sense then yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it just really depends on what you're applying because you know obviously if you're if you're if your entry is like way above like that upper zone like where that blue kennel breaks it then those lower zones below it are pretty relevant because you're not looking down there you're just looking above okay i guess that does make sense and so, I'll, and I'll just tell you my, well, the way I'm looking at it, you know, like, let's just say I'm, I'm just getting, in, let's just say I'm looking at it from like over here, right? Gotcha. So, um, what I would normally say is like, okay, cool. So, I have my zones right here. Um, I see a lot of rejection right here. Let's say, all right, I'm like, I'm going to wait for my next um, buy signal. Boom. Probably clean that up a little bit. Now, the only, the only thing I have, I should say, I was saying about this is like, okay, maybe this is probably not the cleanest just because, you know, there's a rejection right over here. So it may get stuck in this, you know, and I might be bouncing around like a ping pong or like stuck in range, but I probably would have, you know, just jumped into this, but let's see how that, how that got. So, so technically there's no entry right there because you need to wait for a break and close past the structure. There's been no break and close past the structure. I see. So, uh, yeah, there'd technically be no entry right there. Because I would have took it, I would have thought this rejection off of it would have been um, the entry. Yeah, no, your entry would be where it breaks breaks and closes. So if you move forward farther, let's uh, let's continue moving forward on the time, and then I'll show you where you would take the entry. So yeah, keep going forward. So like right there, see where that red candle broke below the the, the structure. Oh, this one. That's where your entry would be. Oh, I see. Yeah, because you need that's the that's what the whole strategy is based off. It's based off a of breaking close past structure. So if you don't if that doesn't happen, then there'd be a there'd be no entry there. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. What and about then, this where it's where it's um going up and it's breaking past structure again? So yeah, that would be an entry right there as well. Uh but turn on the uh, K2SR version two again. Let's see if there's any other zone because I don't think you drew every zone that was in that uh, that little area there. So there's a bunch of zones right there. So oh yeah, right here. Yeah, so you would have actually skipped that trade right there as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cluttered. There's no space for it to work. 
Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to enter the trade and then it ends up reversing on you like immediately after getting into that trade. Yeah, I guess that does make sense. Because then I'd just be bouncing around the entire time. Yeah, and it did. <laughs> exactly. And then you get caught in that trade and you're like, you don't know what happens from there. <laughs> and now in this hurricane from where is this? This is January 18th and January 26th. Oh, gosh. I've been here for a week. Okay, until this happens, you know? Okay. Yeah. And then as you keep going forward, you'll see when price breaks that structure above, uh, like right there. So when that blue candle right there broke, that would have been your other entry. You see where that uh, that third, uh, so go forward a little bit, wait, yeah, just uh, confirm when that blue candle breaks that upper structure. I think it's one more, there you go. All right, one more again, one more or two more. <laughs> There we go. So you see how price broke the structure right there? Yeah. It broke and closed. That'd be the confirmation for the entry. So you take a, a long position right there, and then that would be your entry at that point. Yeah, so from right there, you would take that trade. And then if you move it forward, I think it does hit TP, right? Yeah. Go to <laughs> TP. Sheesh. Yeah. So uh, th that's why you wait for that confirmation, because when price breaks and close past structure, that's going to indicate that um, price is probably going to continue in that direction. And then if you look at that previous uh, buy signal, that's going to indicate that momentum swinging upwards. So you kind of have like a double confirmation right there that price is going to push in that, in that direction. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I guess it does make sense. Yeah. And then you have another entry there too. If you wanted to see oh, yeah. it on the, on the one hour, it applies as well. And the trend meter is green too. So you have a bunch of confirmations there. You have confirmation that, Price broken, closed past structure. You have the momentum confirmation. You have the trend meter confirmation. There's like three or four confirmations there indicating that price is going to, you know, continue pushing up. And that's why it, it wasn't even a down here at all. Like basically just straight in profit, basically. Exactly. So you can see right there that same candle. You see where that blue candle broke structure? You could have taken that into there as well. If you're trading on the one hour. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, so it lines up with both the one hour and the four hour. So if you wanted to apply it on either one, it would work. It's just, um, you know, obviously there's more risk when you trade on the shorter time frames. No, I like the four hour now. Four yeah, it, it's it's super. Yeah, it's way more accurate and it's like less time consuming because you're not checking for every hour. You're only checking every four hours, which makes a huge difference. And here's another thing right here that I noticed. Um, that a mistake I made with three of the um, three of the four losing pairs was um, this right here. So you see how the, the indicator came up for the buy and then the, the, the momentum indicator like changed green. Yeah. I would I would literally jump in right there. So like let's just go for a little bit. So the minute that turned like that, like minute I would have saw this candle. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's just bad habits because I guess I think it worked out one time and then you know once you once the crackhead sees that, it's like, oh good, that means this is the right thing let's just keep doing the, the wrong thing you know exactly and that's what i was mentioning earlier you know like that's the problem with a lot of traders is that they get lucky one time and they think it's going to keep hitting and then it ends up only hitting that one time and then every other time after that it ends up you know not working so that's why um you just got to figure out your trading plan and then just stick to it because a lot of people they'll try to take shortcuts or they want to get in right before you know the confirmation actually confirms and it can be easily turn against you super quickly so even though it luckily worked out, like like in this case, it's, it's the same thing would be best because there's like one, two, three, like four zones that has to like pile through basically. Exactly. Yeah. So like, look at the, look at that green candle, uh, like two, I mean, two signals behind. So you can see that that one over there didn't play out at all. Uh, if you go to the one prior to uh, that one. So if you try to jump in early on that, that other buy signal, the one before the one that you're looking at, that one right there, if you try to enter that, you know, without it confirming, you, you would have gone burnt on that because it went straight down. And then same with the one right next to it as well. There's like another one right before it, that one as well. You probably could have locked in some profit, but if you didn't, you know, move your stop loss in profit, you probably would have gone stopped out as it reversed back down. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So like, you can't get lucky every time, but you know, sometimes you will. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because right there would have been L, a L, and then a win, but it's too late already negative at this point, you know. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. So it just makes more sense just to wait for structure to be broken and, you know, a little space between like this, because this looks like noise, like this looks like range, basically. 
Yeah, exactly. Like way too much noise. And if you drew those clean zones that you had before, you'd be able to spot that easily. Um, like if you were to delete that middle zone, you'd see that it's literally just ranging within, you know, those two zones right there. I delete this guy. Yeah, if you were to delete, delete that guy right there, you would see that it's literally in a range at that point between the, uh, the upper and the lower zone from there. So you can see the huge difference is price uh, crosses above and breaks that that top structure. You can see that it's, it, it clearly breaks out of the structure and then you'd have a clear entry right there if you're, you know, if you decided to take that trade. That makes sense. Yeah, now I see it. Man, 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 all the noob mistakes. <laughs> you know, it's because trading is like, it's like a game of psychology really, you know, like it's more so going off confirmations and, uh, and going off your trading plan versus going off emotion. Because sometimes, you know, you'll be waiting for that candle to close and you'll be like, oh, I've been waiting for this candle for like hours, right? You just want to hop in right away. And sometimes it'll hit, sometimes it won't. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sometimes not, it's probably not going to hit majority of the time if you uh, if you keep trying to take those risks. Yeah, I'm going to definitely chill out and calm down with that. Um, and then, I, I mean, that's good. Damn, I feel so much better now. So <laughs> I guess that brings me to the, the last guy is uh so this gentleman now i've had a good day with him today surprisingly like you know he doesn't i'm usually 50 50 but um i've had a pretty decent day with him so for i think i have that pivots for for the scalping strategy you were talking about that's correct okay so i have my pivots on am i missing anything else uh you just have to draw the zone so you'll turn on the k2sr version two and then um, from there, you can draw your zones to determine, you know, where the, uh, you can turn that one off because you don't need the momentum indicator for, uh, for this specific strategy. There you go. So you can go ahead and draw your zones throughout the chart and then we can identify some entries. Is would this be considered one zone, or am I looking at that wrong? Yeah, yeah, no, you're you're on point. That'd be one big zone right there. Oh boy. Okay. And when it's red, it's supposed to be resistance. Yeah, it, it was established as a resistance, but as price crosses it, it could turn into a support. So the colors don't really matter. Um, but when it was initially, bear in mind what it is. Yeah, exactly. Like like when it was first established, it was the resistance, but then, you know, obviously as price crosses through it, it just turned into a zone. That's why usually for my zones, I just call it like one big one big zone instead of a bunch of zones. Okay, gotcha. And is this would it be from like what's kind of big? You could probably connect that that um all those zones right there actually, because they all overlap. Like whenever they overlap, I just connect them because technically they'd be covering one big area. Okay, like that. Yeah, you can do that right there. So first things first, let's just take a, let's rewind back a little bit in time. What was this? This was this morning? Yeah, okay, perfect. Right before New York session started. So let's actually do it right before New York session started actually. It looks like there's an entry right there exactly where that candle is, that most recent one. I think there's an entry right there. So you see that how that uh, red candle, the last one, it rejects off the pivot and it rejects off the structure. Yeah. This so one's like, yeah. So it rejects off the pivot plus it rejects off the structure. So from there, you can take a long position um, as soon as that one closes right there. I think we took that one on the live today, actually. So yeah, you'd shoot that for about 50 or 500 pips. It'd be 50 points. So mm -hmm. it's 50 points. There you go. And then if you were to let that run, no. 
I see, I see the magic now. Okay. And there's a bunch of entries right there, actually. So there's one right there. If you even, if you missed that specific one, there's actually a whole bunch that came right after it. Oh, like right here? Yeah. So like, yeah, that, that red one right there. And then, well, actually, there's a whole bunch. There's that, that blue one right next to it. And then the red one after that one. And there's a couple other ones after. I think there's one, two, three, the four. Disorder. Um, not that one exactly, but the one. So the uh, the third the the. So if we go like by in order, so that first candle you enter, that'd be one right there, and then there'd be another one on that blue one right next to it. You see how the wave projects off the pivot. Yeah. That's another entry there, and then that red one right there too. Two after it, the uh, the one right next to it on the left. That would be an entry right there as well, because that red that red candle wicks off the uh, green pivot. Mm -hmm. And then the one again next to it, that red one, it wicks off the yellow pivot. So if you miss that first entry, you actually would have a bunch of different opportunities to hop in if you want. Does it matter which uh, pivot that it touches or no? Uh, not at all. So it just needs to reject off any pivot. Um, but the pivot that it's rejecting off, you have to make sure that it doesn't touch the candle body. So you can see for all those right there, they're pretty clean rejections. You see the, the pivot is super far from the... Uh, the body of the candle that's projecting off so you should be perfectly fine so you're saying okay so give me an example of one that's not reject like this this blue one right here for example exactly that blue one right there you wouldn't have taken that because that pivot is cutting through the body okay i see i see I yeah. see. but the one next to it that red one that's perfectly fine because it the, the pivot cuts it just cuts through the wick but not the body like that okay at this red line at the red pivot exactly yeah I see. So the blue one would have been bad. The sorry, this bull would have been bad. The bearish one would have been good. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the is the method behind it like I guess when we get like in twenty five points in profit, we just slide it up and break even. Uh, well, for the scalps, you just let it run because I mean technically you can do that, but um, would you, would you get kicked out too quick? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because it's moving way too fast. If you're scalping. Price is moving so fast, it's going up and down, where you, you kind of wouldn't want to move your stop loss too close and you just go for the full move. Because the 500 pips is a sweet spot. That's usually where it ends up pushing after an entry. Um, and it's enough for you to like lock it in. If you were just to set and forget it, you have a you know a good chance of them hitting. Because literally, if you took all those trades right there, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven entries. They all would have hit full TP if you let them just run. Okay. Oh, and, so, so yeah. like two hours. And they all happen within a two hour time frame. So if you wanted to stack those and take multiple positions, you can do that as well. I mean, there's a ton of ways to apply it. It just depends on your risk tolerance, depending if you, you know, if you want to take multiple positions or just run one at a time, it's just really up to you. Oh, it's FTA most. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. It's not your money, right? <laughs> so who cares at that point? Yeah. I don't, as long as I'm not like, you know, over leveraging, you know, but yeah, I don't mind taking multiple positions. That actually works out. And like the, the cool thing about this is what time is this at? See, this would be perfect because this is like, um, get rid of this. All this happened, what is this, between 7 and 9.30. Like, I'm I'm at my computer, so I could technically just chill and be on my phone if I wanted to. Um, I usually try it on FX Street just because it allows me to. It's the only thing that they don't block me off of at work. So pretty much has majority of the indicators for the most part. But I, I, the point is I can look at candles and just track it on my phone, you know. So like this would been ideal. Like this actually works out. So I can scout technically before work because I'm usually awake around like six thirty every day around this time, six thirty, six fifteen. So it's like here and here. If I could pull in like three trades, because like after ten is when I really have to start like paying attention. I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's pretty solid. You know, like with these scalps. That's what I like about the scalps is that you, there's so many entries available. Like you don't have to trade this in the morning. You can literally trade it any time of the day. And since you're only going for a 500 pip move, you can you can literally just take the trade and set and forget it, because um, it usually ends up hitting at that point, like within a couple hours. So you'll like take the trade, and check your phone within an hour or two, and then you'll know whether it hits or not. Uh, versus taking the intraday trade, and then you'll see it go on profit like four hours later, and then you come back and it's negative, and you're like, damn, I should have closed it. And you come back like two hours later, <laughs> back in profit, <laughs> and it's just bouncing back and forth, right? Makes sense. That makes sense.
Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So, but like a, a textbook ideal one would, it wouldn't really matter, like you said, what pivot it bounces off of. Is it better if it bounces off like, you know, the yellow or the orange one? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. I mean, obviously, if it goes if it goes farther down to the orange or red pivot, it becomes a little more dangerous because those are like the last lines of defense. Like once it passes that, it's probably gonna reverse, right? So oh. if you see the rejection off the yellow and green, that's probably a lot easier because you'll see a quick rejection off it, then it shoot right back up. Versus if you uh, catch one where it goes to the very end, and you know odds are it might reject off it slightly, but then if it has momentum in that direction, it'll probably just be pushing. Makes sense, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like. I'm gonna play around and back test a little bit. Yeah, this I, is pretty, pretty fun. I think this is everyone's favorite because everyone's been locking like a ton of profits just trading this. And they've just been like taking multiple positions and stacking up. Easily. Oh, cool. you're right, there goes another one. Exactly right, yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, you, oh. just have to be, you just have to be careful. Like for me, if I have one loss in one direction, so say if I have a loss taking a sell, then I just take a break and then I wait for it to swing up for a buy, and then I'll take trades in that direction. I like once I have one loss in one direction, I'll take a break and then just wait for it to sw like um, switch in the other direction, and then I'll take it in that way. Because generally for scalping, you'll see price go up and down between trends like pretty often. Like for like one hour, it'll be trending up, the second hour will be trending down, and it'll just go back and forth throughout the day. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I like, I like, I like, I like. So I feel like if I just do like maybe, you know, two or three of these, you know, every morning, then gets the bills paid. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Cause for each trade, I, you know, 500 pips, if you're trading a standard lot, that's a 500 pip profit risk. So with each trade, you can make 500 or lose 500. And you already know you're like, you have a calculated risk already. So once you enter the trade, you're like, all right, I know if I'm going to make this much or if I'm going to lose this much. Um, but for this specific strategy, I'm sure if you go and back test it, you'll see that you'll have a lot more wins than losses. So even if you just take a whole bunch of trades, um, your, your odds are you're probably going to end up in profit at the end of the week, the end of the day, the end of the month, um, you know, et cetera. True. But does it only work for the for the Dow? Does it work for like, you know, SP? It works for everything, bro. Like people are using it for gold. People are using it for Bitcoin. People are using it for Forex. You know what's so funny? Sean, so funny you said that. I was That was, that was like the one I wrote on my notepad to ask you. Um, crap, where are we? I tried it with gold. That's why when you said something like this was like deja vu. I tried it all last week with gold and I doubled up a small account, like from like 50 to 210, just literally just off rejection. It was and everyone was as clean and smooth. I mean only one caught me off guard or something like this, like a bunch of noise. Yeah, I, just, I, I broke even, but other than that, it's like everyone has just been smooth. But I didn't do it on it. I didn't because I'm looking at my phone. I didn't notice when you're on YouTube it that zero looks like a five when the camera is covering itself. <laughs> I was always doing it on the 15 minute time frame, but I guess it's, it's no big deal because it's, you know, all last week, like it was just rejecting and it would just get there. I mean, it may take like maybe an hour. Some of the time it would just shoot there, but it would just, it would hit it. You know, as long as I kept it, I think, was it like 20 points I put it at? Like, not 20 points, sorry, like 200 pips. Basically, I kept it at and now just get in and get out. Exactly. Yeah. Like for me, I like to use a 10 minute, but a lot of people in the group, they use different time frames. Like I've seen people use it on the 15 minute. I've seen people, uh, use it on the one hour, the four hour, and it's crazy because it works on all time frames. So I'm actually going to experiment with it and maybe go on the higher time frames, you know, to play around with it. I think obviously on the higher time frames it'd be good for forex because it doesn't move as fast. But if you're trading something like US 30, you know, you're not going to trade US 30 on the one hour because you're going to be risking like 3,000 pips versus you know the 500 that we already agreed on. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm definitely not doing gold on an hour. I hate I hate to look at that gold to begin with. So right, yeah, yeah I'm here. Yeah, see, getting in and out of gold this is like actually ideal for me. Like that actually works out. What time was this? Oh, that was actually damn. See, there goes one right there. I missed it. But yeah, yeah I, I love it. I, I like, I like it. I like, it, I like it. So, a question like, so something like this. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, the buy is going through it. Okay, never mind. I see what you're saying. And it went through it twice. Like through this candle, this candle. You, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. You just need to confirm that you know there's a zone there, but I'm sure there's probably a zone around like a lot of the lower areas. All this like, like if you turn on the K2SR version two, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to see some zones around that area. There's a whole bunch right there. So like if you go right there in the middle of your chart, you can see where that blue candle is to the left. Uh, that actually rejects off it perfectly. If you scroll down a little bit to the left a little bit, uh, right there. So right to the right of it. See how that uh, that blue candle rejects right off the, the pivot? Oh, off the zone and the pivot. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my freaking God. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it, it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple if you get it down properly. 
Wow. Like 200, 203 pips right there. It's a lot. Sheesh, you are right about that. Three hours. We got in, and, that's, and there's still more in there. And you can yeah. take more, yeah. You can take more as it continue up higher. Okay, yeah. I, I, I'm in love. I like I like this. I like this a lot. I yeah, this this is much. everyone's favorite, including me. So I've been using this. <laughs> this is the main thing I've been using lately. So ideally, my lunch breaks are hours. So technically, I could probably even see maybe one entry, if anything. And it's still in the middle of New York time. So I'm between like 11. I usually take it between like 11 and 12. I can, we can take lunches whenever we want at the bank. But I usually do it between 11 and 12 just because... New York session is still going. British session is already, you know, closed down. So I usually do it around then. So like, if I'm looking at gold, well, let me see. Let me find that. That's actually a perfect time, yeah. Because ten is when like you're your mid session U.S. Uh, market, and then you can you can pretty much hit stuff pretty nicely. And, and I saw I try to figure out the logic. Like, I, I, I'm glad I said because I thought it made logic sense. Like between here and here. So like, all right. So here is a little garbage, but there's been there's other times where it's actually worked out pretty well. Like between eleven and twelve. Especially like on the on the Dow, this guy is seven thirty. Well, majority of the good moves I've noticed, same thing with the Dow is like between like right before U.S. session opens up, you know. Mm -hmm. This is all this is all Asian time. Damn, gold really sucks on during Asian time. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't move at all. You have to wait for London open during uh for gold. Like usually on the London breakout, that's when you have that nice movement, or like shortly prior. Like if you have a setup right before London open, mm -hmm. it usually pushes in your direction. Uh, you know, as it does open. Well, um, my boss was asking us to start taking time off early just because of the whole Corona crap. So I told him since the bank, um, which is the stupidest thing that pisses me off. Oh, it's not stupid. I understand. Like, <laughs> I, I hate the fact that my time off is the is the, the New York Times time off. So we have President's Day off and so does, you know, the stock market, you know, we have better <laughs> than this. So I'm like, crap, I'm happy. Like, yeah, I can just stay up early and trade. Yeah, right. You know, it's Our like, clothes, yeah. Or it's too slow, you know. That's usually what happens. Exactly, it's like a turtle. So what I was um asking to do is like, since we have President's Day off and it's a paid holiday for us, why not? Um, ask him let me just take the day off after that Tuesday. He's like, oh sure. And I was like, I feel like I won't get that much action in on the Tuesday, but I was like, hey, why not? If I could, if I could get a couple scalps, that'll help out. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm taking advantage of that like first thing to, actually tonight since I'm gonna be up a little bit, and then like first thing in the morning to start applying that. And I guess now that I have a clear understanding of my zones or my mistakes, I'm not gonna get in in the garbage. Like this is like enough space right here. It's like well, good what 30 pips each right here. So yeah, yeah. Especially if this rejects off of it. So I'm gonna keep my eye on a lot of these. These well, this guy should definitely keep my eye off. Make sure it breaks in or out before I get it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, there's gonna be a ton of entries. You know, and you can combine strategies too. So if you're looking for the K2SR strategy and you don't see anything. Then you can move down to the scalp strategy and if you see something on there you can just take that instead i mean there's a ton of different opportunities um and now that you're familiar with you know the main strategy that we use um you have like a whole arsenal of things to apply depending on what you're trading and what time you're trading mm -hmm. oh and question is it uh is it too late to get into en and nj um my phone was on mute today uh, so is there any i didn't see any of those um notifications let's see en is uh, I mean, it's not that far in profit. Let's see, it's about it's about to hit TP right now. Actually, it's in profit about twelve pips right now. It's about to hit TP one for EN. I mean, if you want to enter for a late entry, you can. Um, obviously, you know, I wouldn't take it if it's if it's already going to hit TP because that's usually oh, where my that's usually oh. where I move my stop loss in. Um, but other than that, yeah, same with NJ as well. They're both in profit right now. NJ is like closer to entry. It's only in profit about five pips, so you could probably still enter that. But I think oh. EN. Um, it might be pushing it because it's getting to that point already. Okay, yeah, I'll leave it alone. No worries then. Yeah, it's all good. Wait for the next one. You know, there, there's gonna be more. Exactly. All right, sir. I won't hold you anymore. Appreciate your time. Really do. I really do. Definitely, definitely. I'm glad that she picked this up. So like now you uh you know what to look out for here. You had some you know some clarity to your to your analysis. Exactly. No more losses. Well, not gonna say no more, but minimize. Right. No more. Uh, no more lucky wins. Exactly. That's more of well, like confirmed wins. Yeah. Yes. No more luck to, to feed bad habits. Exactly. Right. No, it's, it's that's the horrible. Day. It's happened to me for so long where I just, I, I bet on luck so many times where it, it worked. And then one time it, it didn't work and it blew my account. So just keep awesome. that in mind. Exactly. Right. I, I just can't deal. I can't deal. All right. then, sir, later, I'm going to work on this. If I can double up this small account real quick using this. <laughs>
Nice, nice. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Good luck. And if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out. No, I do appreciate it. All right, definitely. So I'll talk to you soon. Yep, later. Oh, All wait, right. when's the next day you'll be available? Are you, are you free on Wednesday? Uh, let me check the calendar real quick. Uh, yeah, so what time on Wednesday? Let me check. Uh, is it 9 o'clock okay? Oh, what was that from? Sorry. Can you hear you? Same time, 8 o'clock? Uh, 8 o'clock. So I have a session right before that. So it might be, uh, it might be pushing it. What about nine? So, uh, nine. So that'd be six o'clock my time. Let me check the schedule. So we have one, I already have one scheduled for that point. So the next one I have is at, um, at 10 year time. So seven, my time. Um, so I have, uh, yeah, just let me know. Cause I'm blocked out from 4 PM to 7 PM my time. So that would be up to nine year time. So I think my next availability would be an hour or the the next hour following that, which would be 10 p.m. your time. So I don't know if that's too late for you. Uh, a little bit, because I don't want the baby to be up and stuff like that. But I'm gonna let you know tomorrow because I may, I may get up work early one of these days so I can do it then, just get in bed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want to do that, I mean, you know, my, my schedule opens from two up until 9 p.m. my time. So that'd be, that'd be 5 p.m. your time up until... 9 p.m. or no, 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 that'd be a five until I think 10 or 11 your time. So anytime within that would be good because in the morning I have the, the live session, so I wouldn't be able to get on any earlier. But yeah, anytime in the afternoon probably works best. Cool beans, cool beans. Definitely. All right, then, sir, I'm gonna watch, watch this guy. Like, it seems like it might break within an hour, so I'm keeping on, keep my eye on that so I go to sleep. Definitely, yeah. And if you if you find a scalp right there, if it pulls down, you can catch that as well. Exactly. I'm just exactly. I'm like, I'm waiting for either or. <laughs> exactly. You have a whole bunch to look up for. All right, then. See you later. All right, bro. I'll talk to you soon.